Right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to session number four. It is Thursday, and now we're getting to the pointy end of the training because there is now an assignment due. All right. So I'll go over what is required in this session, just so you're all in the uh, in the clear uh, as to what is required. Uh, last night, session um, tutorial number three. So we looked at how do you adapt uh, and what do you need to worry about when you are creating your own OER? And we also looked at how do you license your OER? So that was um, tutorial number three. So if you've not done it for some reason, please make sure that you do it. Otherwise, you won't be able to complete the assignment. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to very quickly um, uh, just, uh, go through uh, some of the most important points of tutorial number three, but very quickly, because I've got lots to talk about today. So um, the, the item I think you need to be aware of is um, this one here. When you are creating your own OER, so some of you might say, okay, I don't want to adapt an existing one. I want to make one um, which I can share, which is unique, which is I've made it from scratch. So if you're doing that, there are a number of things you need to be very careful about. All right. So number, the only, if you were to create any other teaching resource, which you were going to fully copyright, there's no difference. OERs are the same as any other resource in that regard. And um, they've obviously got to be well thought through. They've got to um, uh, address the curriculum. They've got to be engaging. Uh, they've got to uh, excite the learner. Uh, so all the normal things that we would normally say when you're developing a teaching resource is the same. However, for OERs, there are three additional little items that you need to be aware of when you are creating a resource which will become openly licensed. And the first one is, will it be in a format that encourages adaptation? All right, so we're hoping then that you're not going to give us something like a video which is fixed or a PDF which is fixed. We want you to provide us um, an OER that is in a format that we can adapt, that uh, is editable, that can be changed. All right, so believe it or not, giving us a Word document is preferable over giving us a PDF. And the reason why is because you can adapt a Word document very easy an MS Word document versus a PDF, which is fixed and it's very hard to copy and paste and do all the other things that we would normally do. The second one is, will it have a Creative Commons license that's truly open? All right, so the thinking then is, um, are you going to give us a license which is like CC by NCND? I mean, you can, it's your call as to which Creative Commons license you're going to use on your final assignment, but um, to be honest, as a designer, I would much prefer an open, a, a really open license, okay? So I would like something like CC BY or CC BY SA, something which allows me a lot of latitude, a lot of room where I can adapt and change the resource, all right? So um, uh, in the tutorial number three, you looked at how to get that little license. So hopefully you got that far into it. Um, let's... Um, can you choose a Creative Commons license that is really open? And the third item is, is it good quality? It sounds a bit silly, but to be honest, this is going to go around the world. People, teachers everywhere will be able to access your resource, uh, see your name on it, uh, see which school you work for, uh, and so on and so on. And therefore, you know, you kind of, it's your brand. If you think of it in the corporate terms, uh, the quality of your OER is your brand. It's kind of people are going to say, oh, if it's by uh, Varizzo, then that's, we know that's good. That person really, really produces high quality, shareable, adaptable resources. Okay, so keep that in mind. So those are the three things that we want you to be aware of when you're creating an OER. And then the last thing we, uh, that's really important of tutorial number three is your ability to create a Creative Commons license and insert it on your device. So I'm going to do it very quickly. All right. So how do you do that? I'm not going to show you the video. Uh, you saw it last night, hopefully, in tutorial number three. So what you can do is you can do a search for Creative Commons. 
go to the main page. Here's the main page on the screen at the moment. And you'll see at the top, it says, share your work, share your work. So you click on there. Uh, and on this page here, it says, first of all, you need to choose a license. All right. So then you get started. And when you come through, it's going to ask you a number of questions. Okay. The first question, if you look at the panel on the left-hand side, says, are you going to allow adaptations of your work to be shared? Okay. Are you going to allow people to change your work? So at the moment, it says yes. All right. But you can say, no, I want it to be fixed. Or you can say, yes, I don't mind, but as long as others are sharing it with the same license. All right, so keep that in mind then. Which of these are you going to go for? And you'll notice on the right-hand side, as you change these options, the license changes. You see that? All right. So in my case, I've just told you, I want you to really, ideally, release it with a very open um, license. So I would say go for yes, but it's your call. You may choose which license you feel more, most comfortable with. And then the last question at the bottom here is, are you going to allow commercial uses of your work? Okay, can people use it and then uh, actually generate income for themselves? Do you mind um, if, for that? And you might say, well, no, no, no. They mustn't make any money, all right? And if that is your view on the world, then choose non-commercial. And you see, here's the non-commercial sticker appears on your license but to be honest i don't care all right as long as they attribute that i was part of the creation then i don't i normally go for a yes and a yes you see it at the moment it's cc by sometimes i go for this one cc by sa because i thought oh, if i'm going to be offering it to the open community i'd like it to stay there all right in the open community so therefore um, sometimes i go for that one all right, your next thing, though, is because you've got the little man, the attribution, who are they going to attribute? That You need to give them that data. So you click on this button here, and then you can type in your, type in a title for your resource. Uh, I'm going to call it Forms of Water, okay? Attribute a work, uh, attribute work to a name. So who is the copyright holder, all right? So if it's me, I can put my name in. But I can do it on behalf of someone else. So I could say, oh, no. Um, it uh, belongs to Grace. Then it says, do you know where the resource is going to be on the internet? And if you do know, then you can just stick in the URL here. Often I don't know. Not yet. It's only later when I find a home for it. Um, so I don't always fill that one in. Is it an adaptation of a resource that already exists? And if you want, then you can say, yes, it is. And I've borrowed the link uh, from here. And then you can put the link in there as well. Are there any other um, uh, copyright or terms of use permissions that needs to be identified within the license? Some of these big corporations have a little spot at the bottom of their webpage and it says terms of use um, uh, or uh, copyright information. And then you might want to put that link in here as well. I never use it. I don't work in such an environment. Uh, formats. So then you can say, what is it? I normally keep mine at multiple formats. Mine's normally a PowerPoint with animations and audio and, and a whole load of stuff. So I keep it at multiple. And then are, is it going to be for offline or are you going to use it um, uh, uh, in an online environment? I ne nearly always have an online environment. So I always go for that, that top one, HTML plus RDFA. All right, that's very useful. So once you've done all that, that information, you'll notice it's updated the license on this site. So if we look at it now, it says, um, Forms of Water by Grace Harvur is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike International License. And there's the little sticker. All right. So there you go. You've got your little license. And now you just copy and paste it in. So let me show you that as well. So if you go to your PowerPoint, I'm just going to drag it onto this other screen so you can see. Here we go. All right. I can go to a blank presentation. And let's assume, we'll ignore all this. Let's go uh, file, new, blank page. Right. So now you can say, all right, um, forms of water and, um, all right, 
and you can put in the person's name and you can add additional slides, etc. All right. Um, and so on. But it's nice to have at the end of your um, at the end of your PowerPoint, for example, a place where you can put all your copyright information. So I'm simply going to go back to my it jumped out. Hang on, where's my thing going? All right, let me just come down here. So I come back here and I can just copy it like that. And then control C or right click and go copy, go back to your PowerPoint. And then you can just go control V or paste. There it is. So now I can just drag this into position. There you go. Cool. So now my uh, PowerPoint has the Creative Commons license and the uh, attribution information available on the actual resource. All right. So keep that in mind. Then it's, it's very, very easy. Uh, as long as you can get to Creative Commons and that you can generate, use the generator to create the license. All right. So there you go. File, save, uh, and then you're ready to upload it, which is the topic of tutorial number four. Okay. Any questions on last night's homework? Um, let me have a look at the... All right, there's still some technical issues. Uh, any questions about last night? Did you understand how the, uh, the Creative Commons license generator worked? Did you try it out? I'm having a look at our list. Any hands up? So I'm hoping that's good news and that that you are all keeping up. I see there is a hand up to six nine nine eight five. Can you unmute yourself and let's hear your query? Okay, using the phone, it was a bit uh, problematic in the fact that I couldn't merge some of the things like opening a new tab, what, what, maybe it needed a laptop. Um, I've always worked on a laptop, so uh, that's the environment I normally work in. To create it on your phone, then, um, uh, yeah, you, it's not particularly designed for a phone. But then what you can do is you can just type it in. All right. So once you've seen what it is, for example, on the screen at the moment, there's that piece of information at the bottom. You could now just go to where you are developing your resource, and then you can just type it in. So it, um, if you want... You can just go uh, CC by SA and then your name. So we know who to attribute when you're doing it. So if you feel that this is a bit too fiddly for the phone environment, then you're going to have to uh, type it in by hand. Okay. Hey, does that make sense? All right. Any other queries or questions? I must say uh, creating resources on your phone is very modern <laughs> um there's not a lot of real estate but sometimes um maybe you guys can surprise me with something that's beautifully designed on but by, by, by using your phone um maybe you should uh, go to the school and use the school uh, machines uh, all right any other queries so i'm old-fashioned you can see it, to me the phone is um, still something just to read and to make calls with okay any other queries or questions Okay, I'm going to take that as you are all in control and that you are now looking forward to the assignment. All right, I'm just going to delete this. Um, right, so what is the assignment for um, tonight? So there's still another tutorial that you need to look at. Okay, so it's tutorial number four. But basically, we're asking you now to share your resource. So we're hoping then that um, by Wednesday next week. We're not expecting you to do it tonight. Tonight, we want you to go through tutorial number four, all right? But by Wednesday next week, we want you to have shared your resource with the world, okay? And then you're going to have to show us evidence. So keep that in mind. So tonight, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be looking at two 
OER portals. The first one is a local one. It's your uh, Ministry of Education's OER portal. It's called EduConnect. All right. And there are some, um, I'm just going to show you. Here it is. And um, the idea then is we want you to, first of all, sign up. Yeah, this is all in the tutorial. It explains how to do it. But I'll quickly show you. So you can say um, sign in or uh, I think or it knows me. Oh, no, uh, sign in. So what's your first name? What is your last name? An email address, your password, and then repeat your password. All right. And that will create your little account. Uh, it, it will send you a message to your email to check that that really is an email address. All right. So let's try and stop hackers. So can you uh, go to your mail and just confirm? Once you are uh, registered, then you, you can just sign in. So you can see my, my machine remembers all my details. I can say sign in. All right. And then you'll see there's my name in the top right corner. That's how I know I have successfully logged in. And now I'm ready to uh, submit resources. All right. So submit a resource. So uh, the tutorial will explain it all in detail and what exactly has to be done. But before you get to this stage, you need your OER. All right. So um, I would say um, you can start building it now. If you've already got something that you've used previously, then um, uh, you can package that up and share it as an OER. Um, or if you want, you can take something that already exists that we've, you remember, we learned how to search for resources. And as long as it doesn't have no derivatives as its license, then you can adapt it for the Zimbabwe context. So you can make it local. All right. So that's also an option. So you can either adapt an existing resource or you can create a new one. All right, so those are the two options. But then when you get to this screen, it'll explain how to upload. And you'll see, first of all, it wants the title of the resource. It wants to know who you are uh, or the person that is the author of the resource. Uh, resource publisher, most people are putting in Mopsy um, um, uh, here. But you could put your high school or your school's name, for example, in there. Uh, and then which grade are you working for? So you can choose a grade. And then once you've done that, it'll populate the section here and you can choose the uh, appropriate subject. Um, uh, then from the curriculum, can you tell us which section of the curriculum, what is the topic that you uh, your resource uh, responds to? Put us a little description. Um, what is it? Uh, we want you to create teaching and learning resources. That's all we're accepting for the assignment, but you can put in these other things as well uh, in time. But for the assignment, the teaching and learning resource. And then, of course, it wants to know which license you've chosen. So it must link. So the, the license in your resource must be the same as the license that you choose here. All right. So then you can choose which license. What is it? Now, um, most of them are files. So these are all fine, but this, um, so if I had a, a Word document, I would choose a document and then you can see it wants me to drag the resource onto this thing here uh, and then it'll upload it into the repository. Word of warning, people who are trying to do this on their phone fail at this stage because there's no drag and drop in the phone. So the, whoever designed this, little repository was not thinking of phone users they were only thinking of laptops so word of warning don't um get all this way and then find you can't drag your resource in strangely there should be a button that says upload it uh, go go browse go select but it doesn't exist all right so i would say if you once you've created your your resource as 269985 said some of the stuff isn't very phone friendly all right, so make sure then that uh, when you get to this step, you are actually sitting on a, uh, on a laptop with a mouse. All right. If, however, you have created a video, and a lot of people have created beautiful videos, all right, then what you do is you give us the hyperlink. So I don't know, say you upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or one of those video-based uh, services, then you can um, come in here. Let me just go to YouTube. I'll just look at one of mine. All right, so say for example, um, last night's video, right, so you can come in here. Now, but 
Bye now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've heard enough of that guy. Uh, what you do is you come to uh, your share and here's your URL, you go copy, and then you go back to Mopsy. And instead of a document, you choose hyperlink, and then you control and you paste the, the uh, YouTube hyperlink in there. So that's the process if it's not a file. If it's a file, obviously you can upload the doc, you've got to drag the document onto the rectangle. Um, or if it's a hyperlink, you've got to tell us where is it on the internet. So you can put in your thing there. This is all explained in tonight's video. So have a look, go through it carefully, have a think about it very carefully. And then finally, submit your source. All right. So I, I went through that because uh, if you want to get the certificate, um, I, I know Love More is making you put R's in the chat, but to be honest, that means nothing. Some of you are, uh, your names are here, but you don't do anything. All right. So this, if you want the certificate, you have to submit the assignment to EduConnect. And when we see the evidence of it in the repository, we give you the, the certificate. So there's no way around that. No little fancy R's and then you can go back to sleep. All right. We want action. We want real users. So keep that in mind. Um, all right. Um, I'm not saying you're all sleeping. I just know there's sometimes there's some lurkers. All right. Um, so um, if you are interested, uh, the problem, another problem, the main characteristic of EduConnect is that it's for Zimbabwe and specifically Zimbabwean teachers. But if you want to share it with the world, if you want your resource to get out there and be recognized globally, all right, then you need to publish on OER Commons. It's a bit different. The process is different. They don't accept your file. You have to find a home for it, and then you've got to give them the URL. They're only interested in your URL, okay? So um, it explains how all that works here. So you can look at the videos and decide. However, for the assignment, we're only interested in EduConnect. So let me just show you the assignment now. There we go. <clears throat> so what do we actually want? Here is the assignment. Okay. Um, the final assignment is to apply the information studied in the four tutorials. So you need to have gone through one, two, three, and four, know what you're doing. Uh, uh, and then you have to either adapt an existing OER for the Zimbabwean context. So you're going to find one that you like, but it's not quite right for Zimbabwe, and then you want to fix it. Or create a new resource. <laughs> However, either needs to be aligned with the MOPSI curriculum. Okay, so we don't want you to just come up with some weird stuff. It's got to be aligned to what are the requirements in the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education's curriculum statements. All right. All OER must be openly licensed. So it also has to have evidence that there is a license on it. Okay. Uh, and the Creative Commons license plate. Uh, these resources need to be uploaded to EduConnect database. All right. So again, we're not interested in people who can just go R, R, and then hope that's enough to say that they were on the training. We want you to see that you can do it. All right. Um, and when it's in the database, it's got to have all that correct metadata. Metadata is simply a fancy word for descriptive words. Okay, it has to be described uh, in the database. Uh, and here's how we're going to mark it. All right. So we, we will also um, provide UNESCO and MOPSI with a score for module 2B. We will say that um, according to our criteria, uh, this person got X and this person got Y. So on. All right. So what are the criteria? Uh, number one, there, there is at least two or more OERs. So we want you to either create or adapt two or more OERs. Okay, so one will get you half marks, two will get you full marks. All right. Notice the word quality there. We're interested in quality. So if it's a piece of rubbish, and some people have been uploading the most scariest PowerPoints, there's like nothing in it. 
So, I mean, we, we're hitting them on the quality there. So it's, it's got to be good. You're sharing your brand with the world. So quality is the key word in that. Uh, so two, quality resources is that first criteria. Clearly stated on each resource is how it is aligned to the MOPSI curriculum. So we want to know how does this fit? So you're going to say this is geography and we are looking at power and energy or climatology or geomorphology or what. You've got to tell us where it fits and ideally even what is the specific objective that it addresses. All right. So we want to see the linkage between what you've submitted and uh, who should, uh, how it could be used in other people's teaching. Uh, three, uh, add a Creative Commons license to each resource using the generator. So that little generator I've just demonstrated, and that is in the tutorial tonight. So you can spend your own time going through it. Um, we want to see the little license plate on your resource. Okay, so if it's PowerPoint, you want it stuck at the end, like I demonstrate. All right. Um, and then finally, uh, that you have successfully uploaded to EduConnect. All right. So... Um, we're going to give you to Wednesday, five o'clock next week to finalize your resources, make sure that all those criteria uh, have been met and that uploaded it to EduConnect. Word of warning, EduConnect is, excuse my language, no, I won't say it, extremely frustrating. All right, it's... Um, oh. It's not a very friendly environment. Okay, so you might need to have a few goes at it. It doesn't always work the first time. You've got to keep fiddling and faffing. However, having said that, over um, 150 new OERs are in the database uh, from the previous groups. So they, they're doing nice. So um, we want you to persevere just like they do, but give yourself time. Don't leave it to the last minute because, as I say, EduConnect can be extremely frustrating. So, yeah, give yourself plenty of time to uh, make sure that you, you can upload and load in all the metadata. It's out of 10. Um, you've got to score at least five if you want to get the certificate. All right. So that's our little cutoff point. All right. And I think that's all I need to tell you now. Yes. Okay. All right. So any queries or questions about uh, tonight's homework, which is tutorial four, and also the assignment, which you have until Wednesday to have a shot at. I see 269985 still has her hand up. Is it a new hand or is it an old hand? I can't remember. It's an old hand. It's an old, it's an old hand. hand. Okay, you're like me. You got old hands. <laughs> cool. Any other queries or questions? Uh, let's have a look at the chat. Uh, hello, Andrew. Allow to download the tutorial after the session. I don't have sound, but good picture quality. All right. What I could do, I could put a PDF. Is that useful? It still has all the links, but um, I could do that if you want. Is that the, uh, hello. As Silent says, hello, Andrew, please, can you put the tutorial in a PDF form? Okay. A lot of you are struggling with connectivity. I will, um, I'll do it now while we're here. It's before I forget because I'm going straight into another meeting. So let me do that right now. I'm going to put it in the, uh, both the, the WhatsApp, this is number four. All right, so I've stuck it in the WhatsApp. Give me a second, no, I haven't. Give me a second. Uh, document. Tutorial number four, open. Submit. All right. So I've done it into the, um, I, I did number two, but I didn't do number three. So I'll put three there as well for some of the, you people who are struggling with your connectivity, which is a shame. But I'll also add uh, last night's one in case you missed it. Number three. All right. So if for some reason your connectivity is so horrid, um, uh, then 
rather just have a look at the PDFs and then you can always go and have a look at the links if you feel they're necessary. So that, those are the last two tutorials, numbers three and four. Four is for tonight. PDF is in the WhatsApp. All right. And um, let's see if there's any other queries. No, it looks good. It looks good. I'm just having a look. What, uh... All right. So to finish off, then let's have a look at the test. Because okay, you guys have now um, created. Uh, I asked you to do a test. Let's see who won. <laughs> who won last night's homework? Uh, let me call it up. It is sitting here. Easier said than done. I think I've dropped it somehow. I oh, know. Here we go. All right. So um, last night then we asked, or this morning, I asked you guys to come in and have a go at the test. 30 of you um, uh, attempted it. Um, all right. Let's have a look at the players. So um, Tanashi wins easily, 100% uh, correct with uh, 6,875 points. Remember, the quicker that you answer the question, the more points you get. So Tanashi uh, Zinzada, fantastic. Well done. And I must uh, say P. Taru is also good. All right, 88. Oh, and Atta, also 88. And Dark Coat. Um, uh, dark toe. Have I got the right group? Um, let's, let's have a look. May the 20th. Is that today? Yes, it is. All right. Um, these guys have done very nicely. Well done. It's great to see that you guys are acing it. These people are very close behind. These are in the 70s. Um, let's have a look. We've got Lodza, Sunshine, Mickey, Chinez. Oh, hang on. Chinez got lots of points, but only 63% correct. Uh, Rumbidzai and Scrolls. Um, these are all nom de plumes because I mean, we don't want to embarrass people, but you know who you are. So if your um, name is appearing, uh, if your nom de plume, your alias, uh, your avatar is appearing here, then well done. Okay, then we've got in the 60s, here's uh, Snormol got 75, which is nice, but took the time and therefore didn't get as many points. Okay, so uh, don't worry too much about taking time. It's rather get it right, hey? So well done. Let's have a look at the questions and see which ones were causing the trouble. Okay, so um, which of the following is not a benefit of OER? No problems there. The vast majority said small fee required is not anything to do with OER. So well done. All right, which of the following are not benefits of open education? Again, no problems. Provide access to all campuses? What a load of rubbish. No, open, open education is about improving access to education, but not to geographical locations. All right, so well done, not a problem. Um, this, this CC license is the same as full copyright. It's, I don't know if you can, it's got chopped off in the picture. It should be by NCND. And the answer is no, it's not the same, all right? It's a very restrictive open license, but it is not the same. Uh, it's much more open than full copyright, all right? Uh, 16 of you did not get swayed by that, so nice. But 11 of you got taken in, all right? So keep in mind then, full copyright is full copyright. All the Creative Commons licenses do allow um, you to share without asking for permission, and they do not ask you for any type of, of funding, right? Any subscriptions or anything like that. So um, it is more open than proper full copyright. So uh, keep that in mind then. Yes, restrictive, but not full copyright. Google advanced search, free to use, share or modify, even commercially is the same as what? So remember when you're using the Google search, the, um, they don't use the Creative Commons license terminology, but they do kind of describe it. All right, so free to use, share or modify, even commercially is the same as CC BY, all right? Because you can see, you can basically do whatever you like, but you must just attribute, all right? So nine of you got that right. 
Um, uh, quite a lot of you said um, buy NCSA, but be careful, you see, even commercially. So therefore, the non-commercial can't be correct. All right. So it's, the fact that it says even commercially means that it can't be that one. All right. So it says non-commercial. So keep that in mind. All right. Then it says when you go into YouTube and you start using the filters to download the various, uh, to access various openly licensed videos, um, which license does it go for? And both the tutorial and I said in the session yesterday, okay, that to be honest, there are only two for YouTube. They see full copyright and they see openly licensed, but they don't say which one. All right. So generally, uh, the answer is actually a general Creative Commons license. It does not stipulate which one. All right. Some of you have gone for um, uh, buy NCND. No, no, it's much more open than that. All right. Uh, public domain. Yeah, I can see why you might have gone for that because it kind of suggests it's very close or similar, but it's not technically correct. All right. So public domain. Um, is not also correct. The answer was this one, a, a general, who knows which one, a general CC license. So keep that in mind. Then we talked about the five R's and we said, which of the following five R's allows adaptation? Remember, we, I, I told you in yesterday's session that there are five things you can do with OERs, but only two of them allow adaptation and only one of them is here. So the answer was remix which remember I said it was like mashing things together when you push them together. Um, so that is correct. 15 of you did not get swayed by that. So that was nice. Um, a couple of you went for reuse. Okay. But reuse doesn't mean that you were going to change it. You're just going to re uh, use it again. All right. So keep that in mind. Uh, number seven, nearly there. Number seven, um, which when creating an OER, which issue is not a consideration? Because remember, I said there were three. All right. So which one is not there? Uh, will it be in a format that encourages adaptation? That's what we want. So yes, please. Uh, is it good quality? Yes, please. Is it truly open, allowing users permission to adapt? Yes, please. Those first three are exactly what we want. All right. So it can't be those. So it has to be this last one. Is it fully branded with your logo? Okay, now you can stick your logo on with pleasure, but it's not a major consideration, all right? And a lot of people don't even bother. All right, so there's no, that's not correct. Uh, 16 of you saw that as the imposter, so well done. And then finally, 8.8 .8 says, when you see this little green sticker down here, free cultural work, what does that mean? All right, um, heavily restricted license, nah. Use less electricity, what a load of rubbish. Uh, kind to the environment. Uh, where did you come up with that one? And then finally, almost no restrictions. And it was green, which was appropriate because it's a little green sticker. 18 of you got that correct. So well done. That didn't cause any problems at all. And, oh, pardon me. There we go. All right. So um, the one that caused the problems was this one. For some reason, that was one of the biggest uh, stumbling blocks, that question. Oh, no, this one, yeah. Number 27. Okay, that's the one that caused problems um, amongst the 30 people who did it. All right, so just remember then that YouTube doesn't actually stipulate which of the six CC licenses you are choosing. When you upload your video, it says, is it a Creative Commons license? And you either say yes or no. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right. It is now 45 minutes uh, since we started. Um, so are there any other questions? And then I can let you go. Um, I see in the chat there aren't any new questions. Let's look at the hands. Where's my hands gone? Not my hands. <laughs> there you all are. Look at you. Aren't you a good looking bunch? You can see Zanzada is chatting away to someone else. You know, <laughs> who knows if you heard anything? 
All right. Uh, Jeffrey looks like he, he's in on the joke. It looks good. Charlotte's got a lovely ceiling. Beautiful. Um, all right. And dog, she always has this look like she's looking at you. I mean, it's just a picture. So we assume she's there. All right. Okay, guys. Um, uh, 269985. I see you got another head. Is that your other old head or is that a new head? It's a new hand. Hey, it looks lovely. Right, how can we... Okay. <clears throat> I wanted to say I hope you're going to teach us how to use uh, this uh, this Kahoot because it really evaluates and tells you exactly like he's uh, failing and which question was all that difficulty. Yeah. And it's, on that track. it's amazing. It's lovely. And it's free. <clears throat> okay. Did I not... Yeah. Okay, so uh, I can do it very quickly because it's very easy. So you just go to kahoots.com. All right, so it goes here. Uh, you sign up for a new little account. Uh, you go for a personal account, or if you want, a teacher, I suppose. I think mine's a personal one. Um, and it'll ask you some questions. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so on. So just fill it all in. It's just they want to know who you are. All right. It will ask you your email address and all that type of thing. Once you've got it, then you can just uh, log in. Um, I'll just log in here. Right. Now you've got that. Now they give you the ability to, um, uh, to create. So if I go to my library, for example, I can see all the ones I've made previously. You can see I use it regularly for my for my synchronous sessions because it just provides some really nice data. All right. So if we, uh, but all you would do is you'd say, I want to create a new one. Uh, create this button at the top here, create. It says, um, uh, do you want to use all these templates? The problem with Kahoot is that there is a free version, but there's also a lot of paid for or subscription functionality. So, um, as a free one, there isn't a lot of choices, but for me, I, I don't pay extra because I feel what I need is more than sufficient in the free version. So then here you would put in your question. Uh, uh, if you, want, you can add some media. All right. You can put your pictures in and then you can say, what are the answers? Um, So you can put it in and then all you have to do is to say, which is the correct one. You just put a tick in there and then you can say, right, let's go on to the next one. It is that easy. All right. So um, obviously if you've got some nice um, uh, supporting pictures to be a clue, that's nice. Uh, and then you, well, you'll, um, I want to give it a name. All right. So, uh, sorry, I haven't given my test a name. So, uh, you can put in a name, you can say what you're going to do, a couple of little options, you say done. All right. So now when you um, go back, you, oh, you can test it, you can play it now, and so on, uh, whatever. I'm just going to say done. Um, and now you can see it's one of my tests in my little library. So it's that easy and it's free. So um, And you can see the data it gives you is amazing, really, really is good. And for these synchronous sessions, it kind of sexies them up a little bit. Otherwise, they can get very boring. People go to sleep uh, with someone just talking all the time. So you can ask them to do the test. So I hope that helped. All right. Uh, any other queries or questions? Because we've been going for 50 minutes now. I don't want to waste your time. Good. All right. Then that concludes our session today. I will see you for the last time tomorrow at 1400 hours. I'm hoping some people are going to give us um, uh, some examples of OERs that they have created and we can pat them on the back and have a look how good they are. I've got a few from the other groups I'd like to share with you so that you can see the quality of what they're producing. And um, also tomorrow there will be a little evaluation form. I want you to help me evaluate the course and the training and um, 
yeah that that would be very useful so there's plenty to do to, tomorrow uh, meet us at 1400 hours um, and then remember in your minds that you have until Wednesday next week, five o'clock, 1700 hours to submit your two OERs to EduConnect. All right. Any, uh, the WhatsApp stays open. We're still in communication through the WhatsApp. So uh, keep using that channel if you have any queries or questions. Uh, either your peers or myself will help you uh, as, as you post queries. Good. All right. And that concludes the session. Thank you very much. You are free to go.